Hey everyone, Sweet Johnny Cage here, back with another guide for Bloodstained Ritual of the Night. This time I'm going to show you how to defeat the boss Bloodless, as well as get two trophies. The first is Tourniquet, you get that just for beating the boss, but then there is an additional trophy called Bloodstained that you can either get immediately or make some serious progress towards after defeating this boss. So once she's dead, do not leave the room. Very important. This boss is easily one of the biggest difficulty spikes in the game, uh, especially midway through or about maybe a third of the way through the game, it's it's serious. The reason for that is because most of her abilities will put blood on the walls, ceiling, or floor, and then later on, as she becomes weak, she has the ability to uh, drain that blood and absorb it, healing her. So you kind of have to kill her a couple times in order for her to really die. So it gets a little annoying, uh, but she has a lot of abilities, so we'll go over them. Uh, the first one you saw is a big stream. Uh, you should want to jump over her as it's happening. The ability where she launches her umbrellas, uh, they will not attack you until a very certain point. They will turn upside down and try to fly towards you. At that point, they can deal damage, but you can touch them all you want. This ability here is probably one of her deadliest. She puts a big stream of blood and tries to arc it towards you. You can jump behind her. I have had it happen where she uh, bends backwards and hits me with the stream anyway. Very rare, but keep an eye out for it, so just try to be safe. The, uh, the Silver Knight Familiar is incredibly powerful here. He can help uh, block her projectiles and keep you safe. So if you found him, uh, definitely bring him along. Uh, she also has a wave ability where she can uh, throw a blood wave on the ground. That can be pretty annoying, but you just gotta jump over it. Again, the umbrellas are out, but as you can tell, I'm jumping into them and they're not dealing any damage. They only become active when they're trying to fly towards you. So as she hits you, your own blood will spill on the floor as well. So, uh, trying to memorize her patterns and make it so you don't get hit is very, very important. You want to make it so she absorbs as little blood as possible, although it's, it's very tough, but you just don't want to add to the problem if you can avoid it. Her Umbrella Swing ability has two versions, one of which is a guaranteed critical. That's when she opens up the umbrella. That does a massive amount of damage. And the other one, she just swings with it closed. Still a decent amount of damage, uh, but not as bad as the critical. So, uh, I was playing on patch 1.01, and occasionally she would sort of just stand still and let me wail on her. I don't really know why. I'm sure it'll get patched out eventually, but as of launch day, it's patch 1.01. So, you know, maybe this is the day one patch. I'm not really sure. Uh, eventually, she will uh, kind of uh, turn her inwards and then start absorbing all the blood on the ground. It should be happening here soon. Uh, but as you can see, the, uh, the bloodstream, if you were uh, against a wall... Jump, jump towards the door. Here she goes. She's healing now. You can see all the blood uh, being absorbed off the walls, and it's healing her. As this is happening, just keep hitting her. You don't want to let up, because as you can see, she's still healing. <laughs> There's so much blood that she just keeps healing and healing and healing. So it really drags out this fight. If you have any uh, prepared meals or uh, potions, you're probably going to want to use them. You know, Don't be afraid to spend your resources on this fight, because it, it's a long one. It's almost like a four and a half, five minute fight. And it's one of the longest in the game until the final boss. And it's simply for the fact that you have to kill her multiple times, really. you got to keep draining that health pool over and over until you overwhelm her. Uh, as she gets further down in her health pool, she'll bring out a new ability. Uh, or actually, two new abilities. One of which is a sort of like wall of blood that comes out of the floor. And then the other one is a blood tornado. And that one's a little bit more difficult to, uh, to tell that it's happening. Because it's... Uh, it's just not very obvious. So there you can see the blood rains from the floor. It also comes out of the, uh, or rains from the ceiling. It also comes out of the floor. Uh, there's a bigger blood wave that she can summon. I'm going to heal up now uh, using some using a rice bowl. Um, it, these late stage abilities deal a ton, ton of damage and are very difficult to avoid because they just start filling up the entire screen. Um, so here comes a tornado. She sort of like bends inward looking like she's about to start absorbing blood. But instead, she summons a tornado that fills the entire screen and really limits your mobility. So it's very, very important that you try to get on the other side of that. Uh, and of course, uh, it doesn't put too much blood on the ground, but it still can. Um, and I think she's about... Yeah, okay. So she's very, very close to death. I'm looking at my uh, timeline markers here. She's very close to death. So, you know, probably around the time she summons that tornado, that is usually an indicator that she's very low on health. But just keep at her and she will die and you'll get the trophy tourniquet. When the boss dies, you will get her crystal, and it's very important that you do not leave the room. This crystal is Bloodsteel, very similar to Alucard's ability in Symphony of the Night, 
but you'll notice that there's still a lot of blood all over the place. So what you want to do is you want to equip that shard and use it immediately. This will allow you to absorb all the blood, just like the boss does, and you need 1,000 pints of blood, and you can track this in your menu, um, in your personal data, you need 1,000 pints of blood in order to get this trophy, and chances are there is enough in this room to grant you the trophy. So be very sure not to leave the room and use this ability before you leave. You should get the trophy afterwards. If not, uh, when you drain the fountain near the entrance to go to the next area in the game, uh, you, you'll probably get it then too. All right. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment. I'll do my best to help you out. If you're looking for more guides for Bloodstained Ritual of the Night, please subscribe to the channel so you get alerted when new videos go live. If you like this content a whole lot, please consider becoming a channel member by clicking the blue join button below this video. And that about does it. I'm Sweet Johnny Cage. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.